Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is HD StarCraft, and I'm here for another Heart of the Storm broadcast. And today we're going to be looking at the Red Zerg player in the bottom left-hand corner. Another comeback here of Idri... E Idris, EG's Idra, and uh, after he completely smoked TLO, I'm very interested to see how he's going to be playing against the Protoss player in the top right-hand corner, who is Happy Kitty, and Happy Kitty was the one who actually mounted an amazing, an amazing comeback against Terra Prime. Uh, I've never seen a, a play like that before, when you come back when you're down like 80 or 90 supply, and if you guys haven't seen that game yet, I guess I just spoiled it for you, but you guys probably should check it out anyways, because it was just so, so amazing. I've never never seen a game that, you know, when you come back down 60 or 70 supply um, in a situation like that, even Terror said, all right, get out, you know, time to get out, GTFO, and uh, Happy Kitty said, hell no, I'm still in this game, I'm never going to give up, never going to surrender, and valiantly fought his way back. A couple of mistakes, I think, by Terror getting a little ahead of himself, but now it is going to be a whole new ball game. We've got Idra versus Happy Kitty. This should be a good one. It is going to be on Daybreak. And we do have a probe now making its way in for Happy Kitty. Uh, Idra, of course, infamously, notoriously famous for um, his good play and controversial B BM as well. Um, but we haven't really seen that too much. I haven't been casting too many games of him, but um, haven't been seeing his BM too much lately. And I, I think that's good for him overall. He is a very, very talented player. And while he might be that way in game, you know, in real life, he's nothing like that. So. Uh, I, I do feel like it portrays a negative image of him sometimes, but we'll see how this plays out, man. I'm very excited to see two top-tier players, you know, of course, Happy Kitty and Intro, both very, very talented. Now, the probe is making its way over to the natural expansion, of course, going to be blockading this hatchery for as long as possible. Idra is the type of player that doesn't like to mess around with this. Usually, he will pull another drone off from what I've seen uh, in the past. But it looks like he is also going to be doing the same thing that Terror is doing and try to get this natural down. D doesn't want to try to expand out to the distance. He has actually done the exact same thing Terror did. Beat down that probe to a pulp and finally force Happy Kitty to pull away. So the hatchery now forced to go down. Uh, Happy Kitty can do nothing about that. He does have the same exact build coming up. Uh, actually, it is, yeah, it is a Nexus first into the forge and the gateway. So same exact build coming up as he did last game. Uh, against, um, uh, excuse me, actually not the same exact build, but, uh, the Nexus first is the, is, is a strategy that we do see a lot of Protoss do in a Protoss versus Zerg, especially on Daybreak, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, it's just in general very, very good because on this map, you can build the Nexus first, and then you can wall off from the ramp to, to the bottom of this corner right here. And there's really no reason to go Forge first or, or, you know, Gateway first, which is really aggressive. Um, simply because this map is one of those maps where you do want to expand, you do want to play macro style. Um, occasionally on smaller maps, you will see the more aggressive uh, Mothership Core, Naniwa style gateway with Cyber Core. Um, but I don't think on this map it is the right way to go. And I do think that if you want to play and you want to win on this one, you do have to expand and you have to expand rapidly. Look at this though. Happy Kitty has a probe hiding in the top. Now, I, I don't think this probe is hit, hiding here for like a hidden Void Ray, a hidden Stargate or anything like that. Not the same strategy that he employed against Terror. Uh, the reason being is this is the original scouting probe. And uh, uh, yeah, it looks like it has been sniffed out anyways by the Zergling. So it is going to be pushed away here. And I, I think Happy Kitty will probably try to keep it alive for as long as possible. But unlikely he's going to try to make any hidden structures now that the Zergling has obviously, uh, you know, found it. Um, now the probe is running back. It looks like a new probe will replace it. This is the new scouting probe. The original probe going to be going home to mine. Zealot going to come out to escort the probe and push it away. And it looks like Happy Kitty is going to send a Zealot and a probe. Maybe thinking about being a little aggressive at the third ex expansion at the hatchery here. Um, which wouldn't be a bad idea at all. You can always apply a little bit of pressure with a Zealot and a probe. You can even throw down a pylon and really force the Zerg player's hand into producing more units than he wants to. But for now, Happy Kitty is actually adding on a Twilight Council with additional gateways. Looks like he might be going for a Blink Stalker build. No, he's actually going to go for DTs. And very, very quick Dark Templar here. This is not the kind of strategy that Idra likes to play against. And now this is really going to test uh, Idra's uh, anti-BM, if you will. Will he be able to withstand 
the uh, the, <laughs> the sneaky Dark Templar. It looks like the probe, though, is going to be sniffed out. So that's one good thing going for Idra is he won't have to deal with hidden pylons around the uh, extremities of his expansions. But nevertheless, Dark Templar can still walk through the middle of the map. Will Idra be prepared for this? He's sending Zerglings to find the Zealot at the tower and, of course, control the tower for his own. New probe has been sent out, though, and it looks like we now know where the pylon is going to be positioned. Down to the bottom side, Zerglings being sent all around, but they're going the wrong way. They're going to the north. And, you know, Idra is doing such a good job of scouting for potential... Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, potential Dark Templar, potential Stargate, potential any you know, thing that's hidden, but he went the wrong way, and unfortunately for him, in fact, the pylon is down here. Now, there is an Overlord running in here. It looks like the Overlord is going to see the Dark Shrine, and Idra is now going to be completely prepared for what is about to happen. Although, interestingly, Happy Kitty is also dropping a Chrono Boost on the Twilight Council. Now, I think a lot of Zerg players, when they see that, they're going to think, hey, are you trying to trick me? Come on, man. I know you're going Dark Templar. You're, you're not going to be going for Blink Stalkers. But the fact of the matter is Happy Kitty is, in fact, researching something. This is not a fake Chrono Boost. And, uh, you know, if you go to the next level, you might even put yourself in interest shoes and think, all right, I know now that Happy Kitty probably, he might be faking the Chrono Boost on the Twilight Council, but in fact, you know, maybe he is going to go for Blink Stalkers because now I've scouted out the Dark Shrine. And in fact, there is one DT here, but you can see there is only one DT on the map. And so Happy Kitty is not committing to the Dark Shrine anymore because it has been sniffed out. I think that's the right decision. I think he needs to go for Blink Stalkers here. I think he needs to... He, there's no way he can switch his tech back into Robo or into Mass Gateway. He's got to stick with Twilight as it stands now. And luckily for him, he does have a third base. So I don't think he's actually that far behind. It, it does hurt that he made a Dark Shrine, which does cost quite a bit. But he really only made one DT. So it's not a terrible loss for him. And he's going to make the best with what he's got. Um, and you know what? The best with what he's got right now is Twilight Tech, and he's going to go for Blink Stalkers. And I definitely feel like this could end up working to his favor. Um, of course, Idra uh, needs to make a lot of speed links now. The best way to counter Mass Stalkers is speed links. You can even add in Hydras if you want as well. He is, uh, in fact, going for Spire, which... Uh, I don't... <laughs> it's alright, I guess, against Mutas. It's uh, Mutas against Stalkers. It's not... It's not... It's not amazing it's not terrible either it really depends if you have enough mutalisks or not uh but here we go happy kitty is pushing out and uh he does have blink research and blink of course does nullify some of the advantages that mutalisks have uh which is of course mobility in the skies because stalkers can now blink underneath them uh happy kitty does have a proxy pylon set up a couple of proxy pylons in fact he has gone for a very big timing attack here stalkers with sentries I don't know if Idris prepared for this. He does have another hatchery coming up. He's anticipating the attack to occur at the top left-hand side. Little does he know it's actually going to be coming right through his front door. And the Stalkers and Sentries have made their way through. Another pylon is coming up. This is going to be it. Happy Kitty is investing everything here. Will a couple of forces get dropped at the ramp? Most of the forces being used at the front door. They have shut down a lot of the Zerglings and the Roaches. And I don't know if Idris got enough here. Reinforcements are arriving. Happy Kitty needs to blink back to the corner here where he's got a additional stalkers to assist but there's so many roaches and zerglings here will idra be able to break through he's got 12 more roaches and 12 more speedlings coming out it's down to these stalkers will they be able to hold i don't think so more stalkers warping in on the high ground but idra just has far too much and Idra should be able to win this fight. There is a Dark Templar in the mix, so Dark Templar coming in after Happy Kitty sniped the Overseer. Now I see why he was shooting down that Overseer, because he wanted to get a DT in. The DT changes everything, but a new Overseer has come in here. Now, of course, the Stalkers can blink underneath the Overseer and take it out, but the Pylon has gone down now. So uh, Happy Kitty has to pull back, and I think Idra coming out huge in that engagement because uh, he is so far ahead in supply right now. It looks like one DT will sneak on by, but there is a Spore Crawler there. And Happy Kitty now in desperation mode. He's not 97 supply to 146. Um, can he pull another Miraculous comeback? It would require Idra, I think, to make a couple of mistakes, uh, similar to what Terror did. I, I just don't think he will, though. Uh, Idra now on the move out. He is going to take out those proxy pylons. And the Stalkers are now in full retreat. 
Um, I definitely feel like Happy Kitty needs to think about going up for Robotech and getting a couple of Immortals out because I'm not sure if you can win the game now with just purely Stalkers. Um, you know, maybe if you get a lot of Blink Stalkers on the field, but a couple of Immortals and Colossus here would really help him out. The problem is he's pigeonholed himself by going for the early Twilight. It's very hard to make a tech switch as Protoss. Overseer coming in to, cons to confirm that Happy Kitty, in fact, is still on Twilight Council, and he is. Looks like that Overseer ends up costing Indra some supply, but that'll be cleared up pretty quickly with five Overlords now on the way. Looking at some of these tabs here, pretty close units loss-wise. Workers killed. Protoss has lost a little bit more. I'm not too sure where those 12 workers... Actually, no, excuse me. Happy Kitty killing off 12 drones, so that's good for him. Here comes the Blinkstalker army. That is a lot of Blinkstalkers. Upgrades currently at 002. The Roach army doesn't have enough upgrades, and that could be a defining factor, but here comes the Mutilus flying in. Happy Kitty completely out of position. He might be forced to go into a base race situation here because he doesn't have the time to pull back. He'll have to rely on his reinforcing stalkers to shut down those Mutilists. Meanwhile, the Mothership Corps coming in. Will he drop a Time Warp field? I don't see a reason to yet. He might want to pull back behind the ramp and then drop the Time Warp, but uh, he decides to stay and fight. Meanwhile, stalkers, of course, uh, getting shut down as they try to warp in. There is a couple of Photon Cannons here, but there are so many Mutilists. We are in a full-in base race situation. Will Happy Kitty be able to mount the comeback? He is going to go down for the Baneling Nest, the Evolution Chambers, and potentially the Roach Horn. That would be a huge blow here to Idra if the Roach Horn should go down along with the Spire in the back. Mutilus trying to take down the Pylons that are powering all the Warp Gates. You can see how both players' strategies now are focused on taking down each other's tech facilities and their ability to produce reinforcements because they know what situation they're in right now. And a couple of Banelings coming in. Wow! Did not expect that. Uh, Banelings are not that effective against Stalkers, but every little bit does help, I suppose. Meanwhile, the Mutilists are being recalled home. Happy Kitty um, is in a lot of trouble. He might want to recall his army here. I don't think he can fight. And he does get the recall off just in time. Beautiful recall. And I think about two-thirds of the army making it back home there. But unfortunately for Happy Kitty, I do feel like that was his... Um, last stand, if you will. That was his only hope of winning this game because it is so hard to win against Zerg if you don't go Robotech. If you completely forego Robo and you go only Twilight Council and you're not in Templar Tech by this point in time and you only have Blink Stalkers, uh, it is very hard to win against a Zerg player, especially Muta Ling, which is basically the counter to Blink Stalkers. So um, I'm not sure what Happy Kitty can do at this point. He knows that it's almost like he had to pick the lesser of two evils. He could have stayed and tried to fight it out, but he was hopelessly outnumbered and outsurrounded, so he had to recall. But recall also puts him in a predicament because now he's conceding the fact that you know he's down and so far in supply and he doesn't have the tech he needs to win this game. Um, I really feel like he should forget Robo then. Just throw down maybe a Templar Archives and try to get some Archons out because Archons are the perfect unit. In fact, he's one step ahead of me. There's an Archon and that's exactly what he needs to do. Uh, he needs to save up all of his gas now for Archons because Archons will shut down Mutalisks and Zerglings. Um, of course, Idra can then you know, magic box to Mutalisks to keep them spread out to prevent the Archon splash damage. That's where Storm would have come in, but Happy Kitty doesn't have enough gas to get Storm. Here we go, though. Time Warp. Great Time Warp. Shutting down the Banelings' ability to advance on the army, and that really negates their ability to strike home, although there are so many Banelings that they do get up in the mix. Now that Archon just got completely obliterated, and I think Happy Kitty will have to pull away here. That oh, All the Protoss horses just rolling down the ramp, courtesy of the new physics engine of Blizzard. And Idra here, gotta be laughing as he knows that he's got this game in the bag. Uh, 199 supply to 101, and you know, despite Happy Kitty's um, uncanny ability to come back despite the odds, he almost actually pulled it off with that base trade scenario, but uh, unfortunately wasn't quite able to get there. This army is now really, really scary. Uh, and I, I think probably now it's dwindling down as there's not much the Protoss player can do in this kind of situation. But, you know what? Happy Kitty never gives up. He never surrenders. Maybe he can pull something out, but this is not looking good when all of his forces are stuck uh, <laughs> in front of the gateways. He might want to consider breaking down one of the warp gates right here in order to facilitate easy movement between the third and the natural. Um, but what is going on here? Is there really a Dark Templar still flying? Uh, 
running around inside the Zerg army. And the CT's got one kill. But I think once an Overseer comes in, or that fleet of Overseer comes in, that is going to be the end for the Dark Templar. And he's fleeing right now. He's running for it. But unfortunately, gets surrounded against the hatchery. And that army, man, is so scary. The one thing I think is going for Happy Kitty right now is Idra hasn't attacked yet. He's allowing Happy Kitty to build up a larger army. And the other thing is, uh, Idra is not on tier 3. He's still on tier 2, which, you know, might bodo, might bodo all right for, for Happy Kitty if he can get more Archons out. But I don't know, man. This is going to be scary. And there we go. This is the big fight we've all been waiting for. One Archon is stuck in the back, unfortunately. And the Banelings are just rolling in. Some of the Stalkers are able to blink behind the arm, behind the warp gates. Totally forgot that they could do that, of course. And uh, it looks like it looks like Happy Kitty actually makes a hold. Um, not not bad, not bad for Happy Kitty. But uh, <laughs> I think Idra will continue to reinforce, and he has now realized that the only you know, the way to completely capitalize on Happy Kitty at this point and end this game for sure is to go to Hive Tech and realize the full potential of the Zerg Swarm. Um, and, and yeah, Happy Kitty now in full on retreat. He is trying to focus the Metalist down. He does have 003 as his upgrades, which are further advanced than the Zerg army is. But the problem with Stalkers by themselves are just not a good enough unit to fight against this massive swarm of Zerg. And GG well played calls Happy Kitty. So Idra takes another victory on my YouTube channel. Really well played. And uh, I do wonder what would have happened if Happy Kitty had actually been able to mount that comeback and win this game, or if he if or, or if he had been able to win with the Dark Templar um, uh, surprise attack in the beginning. Had Idra not scouted, would Idra have uh, you know GG'd out, or would he have you know? said some BM things and then left the game. Uh, who knows? But you know what? Idra's a very, very good player. Very well played right there. And it's just showing that um, he is among the world's best Zerg players. Hope you guys enjoyed the cast. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Um, this is HD signing out.